Hey YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines. Uh, today I'm in my quarantine. I hope you guys are doing well. I send out positive vibes and hope you are able to get through the boredom that is staying at home constantly. But today I decided to take advantage of the fact that we are quarantined and do a little review sort of outlook on the X100V by Fujifilm. So the title of the video is who is the X100 V4? Now, there's a couple of things I wanna evaluate in this video. And one is if you do have something within the X100 line, is it worth it for you to move up to the X100 V? That's the first thing. And secondly, if you have a certain type of workflow, is it worth buying this camera? So without further ado, let's get into the video. The rangefinder was a take on simplicity and quality. It was made as a reaction to the adage that the only good camera was a large camera. In fact, it can be argued quite convincingly that Leica's claim to fame stemmed from their success in manufacturing fantastic smaller style cameras that were able to deliver stunning images. To make a long story very, very, very short, the rangefinder was able to shorten the distance between a lens and the film by using a different system to nail manual focus. So I think Fujifilm came out with the X100 line a long time ago just because of their love of the whole concept of the rangefinder camera. So you'd get a smaller camera and the great image quality that you had on a reflex. So let's go into Fuji's take on the rangefinder camera. So for the whole line of X100 cameras, you do not have to go far to see where Fujifilm took their inspiration. But what Fuji has done is add a technological spin to an old idea. The simplicity quality concept that was the goal of the rangefinder style is now brought to you into the 21st century. The conclusion is a vintage, hands-on look and feel camera with a high-tech twist. Super high-quality image digital convenience with the hands-on dial systems of old. Therefore, it goes without saying that after coming out with five iterations of the same camera, Fujifilm has got to be doing something right. What could Fuji add to a pretty well optimized digital rangefinder camera? Surprisingly, they have come up with many useful improvements. Let's look at those. The most notable improvements are it features a new 23 millimeter F2 lens. It has an advanced hybrid viewfinder. It's optional weather resistance now via an optional ARX100 adapter ring for the PRF protection filter. It's updated X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor and X processor 4 that comes from the X-T3. And they have also added a stop to the internal ND filter. Other improvements that are worth noting is that there's even more attention to detail and finish and it is nice. It has a more comfortable lens barrel and it has touch controls as usual and vintage ISO dial a la Canon AE-1, which I thought was really cool. It's the whole lift and twist type thing of old. Fuji has made some great decisions on this camera by improving some important key features that quite frankly, on all other cameras, are always welcome improvements. Fuji increased resolution on the new camera's 23mm f2 lens. This lens, according to Fujifilm, now gives you, and I quote, lower distortion and improved close focus performance. This is always nice when you have a lens and you are stuck with it. The sensor is now the same back illuminated X-Trans CMOS 4 and X-Processor 4 from the flagship X-T3. For greater focus IQ and face and eye detection performance, this to me is extremely welcome because I cannot tell you the extent to which both the combination of the new processor and sensor changed my outlook on Fujifilm cameras as a whole. 
They really changed the game and made Fuji a contender, even when comparing to other full-frame camera options from Sony, Canon, and Nikon. So you guys, I just wanted to interject really quick here and talk to you about the dual system on the X100. The X100 has a system where you can actually use an optical rangefinder or you can use a digital rangefinder, which means the EVF, electronic viewfinder. You have a choice between the two, or you can even have hybrid where you have what's called the ERF and use both. I had the X100F. I did not find that feature to be useful, and I believe Fuji really believes this is one of their aces in the hole on the camera. I do not find it to be useful. I can understand how somebody else might like it. I have talked even to a couple of professional Fuji X photographers who are not big fans. They find themselves going in an either or situation, either taking the optical or always using the EVF the whole time they have the camera. So is it a bonus to have on this camera? I guess so, to have the choice between the two, but for some reason, I personally don't find the added value in having this dual system within the camera. Now, another thing they also improved that which I thought was absolutely fantastic are the video functions. So all the great video features of the X-T3 can now be fine in this little camera. 4K video at up to 30 frames per second, 120 frames per second at 1080p high bit rate for slow-mo, 10-bit 422 color externally via the HDMI, Eterna film simulations to video. These are great things. Having a high quality, compact APS-C size sensor, one lens, photo and video camera in one's pocket is quite a big deal and should not be overlooked. Who is it for? It's for anyone who wants to have something small, quick and super high quality. Therefore, all people who think cell phones just don't cut it in image quality. So street photographers, lifestyle photographers with an extra eye for image quality, posers. It is truly a beautiful camera. So if you want to look around and just have a nice camera in your hands, it is beautiful. So I include posers. What the hell for the hell of it? Fine art photographers that need something to go everywhere and when they have inspiration, they can pull out a good camera and know they're going to get a great shot. Bloggers with a need for beautiful blog image content. Just a fact. Who is it not for? Well, it's not going to be for a fashion photographer who needs to change out their lenses at times. It's not for event photographers, people who do weddings and stuff like that. It's just not the camera that you're going to need. You're going to need something else. And Fuji also has it for you via the X-T3 or even now the new X-T4. It is not for vloggers. It now has a tilt screen, but not a flip screen. And that I thought was a bit too bad. Fuji has ignored that market and don't realize that by just adding that little flip screen option, they could have destroyed the vlogger market. If you already have something from the X100 line, an X100F, an X100T or whatever, do you want to get this camera? Well, here's what it offers. It'll offer you a better lens, the tilty screen on the back, possible weather sealing if you want it, and way better low light performance. I can tell you that right away. I moved up from the X-T2 to the X-T3, and I was super impressed by the amount of image quality performance out of the sensor and the processor. It is quite impressive. And also anyone who wants to have better video. So as I told you before, I did not have this camera in my hands, so I had to talk to a, an owner, a person I know who did buy the X100V when it first came out, and I talked to him a bit, and he gave me his impressions. This is a guy who has a Nikon D850, so he's definitely equipped with some full-frame stuff, so I really do love his photography, so I do trust his opinion very much. What he told me is that the ergonomics of the camera is really great. He put it in his hand, and it felt really 
really good right off the bat. He found himself even buying a couple of accessories and just not using them just because uh, when you take it in your hand, it is a lot better. And he, he really saw a difference between the X100F. Also, in terms of the actual quality of the shots that he took, they are stunning. As you can see from the slideshow that you're looking at right now, I think what struck him also which he found really incredible was he is a guy who almost always shoots in raw and he found himself really 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 enjoying shooting in jpeg with this camera using some of the color presets that are within the camera so that was something that struck him as great also wanted to mention that he uh, bought the waterproof accessories he did not buy the fuji one so it's just to tell you guys out there that there's also some generic waterproof accessories that you can put on this camera to make it waterproof and he did use it and a time in New York when it was raining a lot and he found the camera to definitely be very very well weather sealed when you do use the accessories to me personally one of the other big options you should strongly consider when you go and you say, I'm gonna buy myself a Fuji camera, is to also think about getting the X-T30 with one of the pancake lenses they have. Now, here is what I own. I'll try to get that to you guys. It's the X-T30 and I use the 27 millimeter F 2.8. With the X-T30, you have a lot of quality professional features that you have in the X-T3. So you do have a full, featured camera. So you get a full featured camera, you get the small size that the X100V has, and you have the luxury of having interchangeable lenses if you want to upgrade later on with the X-T30. Now, given that you have those advantages, remember, that with an X100V, you have a couple of things that are really cool. You can flash sync at any speed because of the fact that the shutter is within the lens. You have a built-in ND filter. These are things that might make you say, I will not get an X-T30 with a 27 millimeter and I'm gonna go for the X100V. So that's all I wanted to say for that, but I just wanted to mention that there's that option and we're staying in the same price range when we buy an X-T30 with a 27 millimeters. That's it for me, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing.